Good morning, everyone. Um, I will give you a little preview of what my stand looks like today. I have so much information on here. Um, I apologize if I stumble over any of it. We are in the process of figuring out our new camera. And while we are figuring out our new camera, we are still using the old camera because we know the old camera works. Um, and so I'm operating both right now, plus, you know, leading worship. So um, all of that to say there's exciting things coming, um, but they're not quite here yet. So welcome to worship here at Boone Memorial Presbyterian Church. We are glad to be worshiping with you all. Um, it's a much more pleasant uh, weather day outside than it was last week. So i um, glad that everyone made it through that crazy snow thing uh, without any trouble. Um, a few announcements today. First, we celebrated Epiphany last week, which means that we have Star Words available for you to choose. If you were not able to be here last week, they are right here and you're welcome to grab them at any point. Um, for those of you who might not know, Star Words are um, a way to guide our focus in the coming year. There's nothing magical or mystical about them. They're just different words um, to help us kind of focus in as we enter into 2022 and to see where God may be speaking um, in our lives um, in, in related to that word. If you are unable to be in worship and you would like one, please just let me know. I'll grab one for you and then I'll either mail it or send you a picture or something like that. Um, so Star Words are available. Also, the last thing that we did with our uh, Advent and Christmas series is that we invited everyone to take home uh, a piece of furniture from the house that we've built. On Epiphany Sunday, we discussed um, about sometimes the path takes us away from where we expected to be. And so uh, I invited everybody to take a piece of this to remind us that even when the path leads us in a direction that we didn't expect, God is still with us. Um, so you are welcome to grab one. Even if you didn't make one, there are plenty of carpets in. There's a lot of carpeting in this house. There are lots of carpets you can take home, um, little ones. You can stick them in your pocket. You can put them on your desk, whatever uh, works for you. So please make sure you take home a piece of the furniture. Um, also, Session has called a meeting, our annual meeting, for January 23rd following worship. That will be to uh, go over the budget that session approved in December uh, for purposes of transparency and also to approve my terms of call. So uh, session has a lot of authority in the church, but one of the things that they do not have authority over is the terms with which you call me. And so I will be sending those out um, probably sometime this week so that you can look those over beforehand and then you will all be voting uh, to approve those terms of call or to reject them, whatever you wanna do. Um, and so we need as many people uh, here as possible. Uh, anyone is welcome to the congregational meeting. Only members are permitted to vote, but anyone who is a part of the church's life is welcome to come and be a part of that meeting. Um, and I feel like I was, oh yes, um, we will be live streaming it also, um, but we will not have an option to vote from home. So if you feel very strongly about wanting to vote, you should try to see if you can make sure that you're here in person on the 23rd. Um, and then our final announcement, um, since we finished our reverse advent calendar, which went marvelously, by the way, as I hear from Karen. She's very excited about all, all that we have to contribute. Um, we're pivoting in our mission a little bit. So in January, our focus is Hope's Door, which is a shelter for, I believe, um, women and children, especially those who have um, been in abusive relationships. It's a shelter for them. Um, and so for January, they're the organization that we're going to be focusing on. And they are looking for canned or non-perishable food, cleaning supplies, diapers of all sizes, um, diaper wipes, batteries, uh, nine volt, double AA, A, triple A, and then plastic cups and plates. Those are the focuses for Hope's Door. Um, and I believe Karen will have information posted in the Narthex and um, we'll get this out to you in an email and you can always ask Karen if you have any questions. 
Um, also, if you happen to like dogs and cats and pets, um, we're also collecting some more items for the Humane Society. Uh, we had collected a little bit during our uh, reverse advent calendar and we're trying to round out our donations so we're not just sending them a few cans here or there. So um, any kind of adult dog or cat food, cat litter, wet, dry food for kittens and puppies. Um, and they're actually looking for baggies as well, gallon snack and quart sizes. Um, so if you're tired of non-perishable food and you would prefer to go the animal food route, we're also collecting for that. Uh, so again, I will put this in an email, and if you have any questions, um, please don't hesitate to ask. Thank you for your generosity um, and for making a difference in our area. So are there any other announcements that I missed? No. Okay, excellent. Then let us stand as we're able and call ourselves to worship as Teresa makes her way forward. Oh, no, we're here. Give to the Lord the glory due God's name. We bow down to the Lord in holy splendor. Alleluia. Let the Lord give strength to God's people. Let the Lord bless us with God's peace. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us worship God. Thank you, Teresa. You may be seated. Friends, God loves us and calls each of us by name. Knowing that we are eternally forgiven and infinitely loved, let us boldly confess our sins before God. Let us pray together this unison prayer of confession. We are precious in your sight. Yet we often forget that we are your beloved. We confess that our love is fickle and inconstant. We follow selfish goals and deny that our way of life harms others and hurts your world. Forgive us. We are sorry and we want to change. Create in us a clean heart. Strengthen our resolve. Reconcile us one to another and bless us with your peace and your mercy, hear our prayer. sins. Know that you are pardoned and be at peace to love the Lord and serve the world. Thanks be to God. Now friends, the peace of Jesus Christ be with you all and also with you. I invite you to turn and share the peace with your neighbors in whatever way makes sense for you. Um, I also encourage you to uh, send the peace to someone who is outside of this room. So if there is um, someone dear to you, uh, I invite you to take out your phone and, and send them the peace of Jesus Christ because we remember that our community goes beyond these walls. Our community includes all those who seek to follow Christ. And let us sing our response. Uh, it's not instrumental. I forgot to delete that part. It's sung. Our sung response, we are forgiven.
invite any children who would like to come forward and sit in these front pews or to sit at the little table here. You're welcome to come forward at this point. Or you can sit in your pews. I know Sunday mornings can be kind of tired, tired mornings. Um, friends, everybody, raise your hand if you like it when somebody says something nice about you. Okay, good, good. I see most people. I think that's, that's a good ratio. How does it make you feel when somebody says something nice about you? You can just shout them out. Wonderful. Wonderful. How else does it make you feel? Loved. Loved, appreciated. Yeah. Anything else? I'm meeting their expectations. Meeting their expectations. Yeah. That you're helping them, right? That, that they, they appreciate you, right? So we all like it when anybody says something nice about us. But I don't know if you realize this, but it really does make a difference who's saying the nice things, right? Have you ever noticed this? It's always nice, but like, I wonder what it would feel like if a robot came to your door and said, you make me happy. <laughs> You'd be like, okay, cool, sure, thanks. But then I wonder what it would feel like if your neighbor or like a new friend that you just met, how, how do you think that would feel if they said, you make me happy? That would feel good. How would it feel compared to the robot? Much better. Much better, right? All right, and then I wonder if it would make you, what it would make you feel like if somebody that you love more than anything in the whole world, your parents, or your grandparents, or your teacher, or your best friend, or whoever it is, whoever you love the most in the whole world, if they said, you make me happy, how would that make you feel? Oh, wonderful, right? They all feel good, but it really depends on your relationship with them, with the person, on how good it makes you feel, and how special it is. So today, our scripture reading, New Testament scripture reading, we're going to be reading about Jesus' baptism, when Jesus was baptized. And the Bible tells us that a voice comes down from heaven when Jesus is baptized and says, you are my son and I love you. You make me so happy. How do you think it would feel to hear God say, you make me so happy? Amazing. Oh my gosh. That's got to be like the best thing to ever hear, right, from God. Well, I got some good news for you all. God said the exact same thing when each and every one of you were baptized. When each and every one of you were baptized, God said, you are my child and I love you. You make me so happy. And maybe we didn't hear it with our ears. But everybody who was there heard it with their hearts and their spirits. That's why we do that sacrament, because that's when we get to connect with God and hear God say, I love you so much. You make me so happy. And then every time we think about our baptism or remember our baptism, our hearts remember what it sounds like to hear God say, you make me so happy. So today, we celebrate Jesus' baptism. We have our baptismal font at the back of the sanctuary, kind of the middle of the way our sanctuary is set up. Um, but the reason for that is so that when you come into the sanctuary, the first thing you see is the baptismal waters. And so your heart can say, oh yeah, God loves me. And so I invite you today after worship on your way out to take a stone from there there's stones at the bottom to help remind you even when you're not near the baptismal font. And we'll take it a step further. If you want to, you can take your stone and put it in our cairn, our little pile outside the doorway, and pray that someone else will remember that God loves them. Somebody that you know needs to hear that. So let's pray together. Dear God, sometimes it can be so hard to hear your voice in everything that goes on in the world and all the messages that we get from TV and friends and church and everywhere. There's so many messages coming in, but help us to remember the most important message that you give us, which is that you love us and we make you so happy. 
Help us to live up to your feelings for us, God, and help us to remember and remind others of this truth that will never change, your love for us. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Now you can go up to Sunday school if you would like, or you can stay in worship. Let's see. Oh my gosh, i got to shuffle some papers here. All right. Okay, so Teresa. The Lord, today's reading is Psalm 29, verses 3 through 9 from the Common English Bible. The Lord's voice is over the waters. The glorious God thunders. The Lord is over the mighty waters. The Lord's voice is strong. The Lord's voice is majestic. The Lord's voice breaks cedar trees. Yes, the Lord shatters the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon jump around like a young bull. Make Syrian jump around like a young wild ox. The Lord's voice unleashes fiery flames. The Lord's voice shakes the wilderness. Yes, the Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The Lord's voice convulses the oaks, strips the forest bare, but in his temple everyone shouts glory. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Okay. <clears throat> Friends, our New Testament scripture reading for today is from Luke's gospel. Uh, we will be reading Luke's account of Jesus' baptism, and this is very short. We're reading verse, uh, chapter 3, verses 15 through 17, and then 21 through 22. Listen now for the word of the Lord. The people were filled with expectation, and everyone wondered whether John might be the Christ. John replied to them all, I baptize you with water, but the one who is more powerful than me is coming. I'm not worthy to loosen the strap of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. The shovel he uses to sift the wheat from the husks is in his hands. He will clean out his threshing area and bring the wheat into his barn, but he will burn the husks with a fire that can't be put out. When everyone was being baptized, Jesus was also baptized. While he was praying, heaven was opened, and the Holy Spirit came down on him in bodily form, like a dove. And there was a voice from heaven, you are my son, whom I dearly love, and you I find happiness. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. On an off note, um, a side note, I encourage you to read verse 22 um, in a bunch of different translations. Um, it's fascinating to hear how different theologians over time have translated those words in Greek um, that were originally recorded by Luke. Um, all of them have the same message, though, that Jesus is beloved and that God is pleased. Um, so, all that being said, let us pray. O oh Lord, who is still speaking, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts together be acceptable in your sight. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Why doesn't God talk to us anymore? It's a question that most people of faith have had at one time or another. I remember wondering it as a child, as well as reflecting on it as an adult, a seminary student, and I've been asked it several times as a pastor. And to be honest with you, I don't think I usually offer a particularly satisfactory explanation. Throughout scripture, we read about ordinary, everyday people seeming to have entire out loud conversations with God on a regular basis, as if God had just called them up on the phone and wanted to chat. 
And yet, while hundreds or even thousands of different messages make their way into our consciousness each day, very few, if any of them, come to us as words booming down from heaven, like it seems to say here in Luke. Now, don't get me wrong. It's not that God is absent. I'm not saying that at all. People of faith sense God with them all the time. We feel God surrounding us in times of trouble. We experience God in the love that we feel for one another. We recognize God in moments of wonder and awe. We respond to the Holy Spirit moving in our lives. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this and every place. But God's voice? Psalm 29 describes it as something that thunders, something strong and majestic, something that unleashes fiery flames and shakes the wilderness and strips the forests bare, something that requires no interpretation because it's impossible to miss. Sensing God's presence can be a profound, powerful, and holy experience, but if we're being honest with ourselves, it's usually not anything like what Psalm 29 describes. Certainly, God can and does communicate with us through God's presence, but if this passage is any indication, God's voice seems to be something distinctly different. Now, even though I've never heard a mysterious voice so loud that it makes everything around me shake, I do believe that I've heard God's voice before. But only once or twice in my life, certainly not frequently enough to consider myself any kind of expert. And since one person's experience is rarely representative of humanity at large, I decided to crowdsource this week other experiences of hearing God's voice before I sat down to write this sermon. I figured it might help me to find an answer to why God doesn't just chat openly with humanity the way God seems to in scripture. More than 20 people responded to my inquiry, I put it in a couple places, um, with detailed accounts of their hearing God's voice speaking to them. All of them were deeply personal, so I won't share them here as much as I'm sure I've piqued your interest. But I will share some of the commonalities that I noticed as I sat with these stories. The first thing that I noticed, that I learned, is that unlike the experience of God's presence, which happens all the time, every day, it seems that hearing God's voice is rare. Most respondents told me that it only happened to them once or twice. Even those who mentioned that they've discerned prophecy as a spiritual gift of theirs, even those folks don't just hear God chatting with them all the time. It's not like in Bruce Almighty or Evan Almighty where God just comes down and chats. Maybe we misunderstand all those scriptural accounts because it turns out that God is still speaking It's just not an everyday occurrence. And that seems to be a good thing because the second thing that I learned is that the experience of actually hearing God's voice can be utterly disorienting and overwhelming. Many people reported confusion about what was happening to them. One person theorized that God's voice is just too holy for human beings to encounter directly for too long. And I mean, this idea has scriptural precedent. Isaiah explains that seraphim have six wings, that seraphim are an order of angels. They have six wings with two completely devoted to covering their face to shield it from God's brilliance. In Exodus, Moses covers his face with a veil after coming down from Mount Sinai, after having spoken to God because his face emanated secondhand glory too brilliant for the Israelites' eyes. Saul, later known as Paul, was famously blinded after seeing the risen Christ on the road to Damascus. So clearly a direct encounter with God is difficult for mortals to to take in, to endure. So why wouldn't God's voice have a similar effect? 
This doesn't mean, however, that God's voice is vague or ambiguous just because we don't have too much access to it. One thing that all the stories had in common is that in each one, God's voice speaks with startling specificity and clarity of message. It conveys a certainty that goes deeper than the conscience or even personal resolve. One person described it as like a light bulb situation. Another said it was like all of a sudden something clicked. Many of the stories, including one of my own, were calls to ministry or other vocations. Others were instructions to reach out to a specific person or to help someone in a particular way. And some were simple messages of affirmation or love, like the one we read about at Jesus' baptism. But every single one was explicit and pointed. This is one of the most basic ways that an experience of God's voice is different from an experience of God's presence. It conveys a specific message with an unmistakable sense of direction. Think Jonah's call to Nineveh or Jesus' baptism, as opposed to the events of Pentecost or Jesus' miracles, where God was clearly present, but the message was not as clear. While God's voice is unambiguous in its message, that doesn't mean that it's always conveyed out loud. Some people specifically reported perceiving audible words, and almost everyone referred to their encounter as hearing God, but the experience wasn't always that straightforward. Many experienced God's voice as thoughts inside their own head, but they specified that it was in a way that made them absolutely certain the thoughts didn't originate from within themselves. Others encountered God's voice within their dreams, again, somehow distinct from what they normally experience when they're dreaming. And a few people even attempted to describe waking visions that they had, which was, as you might imagine, quite a challenge to put into words. One person said it like this. She said, the Holy Spirit, it's like the Holy Spirit is highlighting something for me, but not visually. Very confusing. This, this clearly external message is almost always accompanied by an intense internal reaction. Many, many people describe the experience of hearing God's voice as eliciting a strange physical or emotional sensation. These descriptions were the most sacred and mysterious parts of my research this week. I heard descriptions like, it felt like lightning had hit me. Someone else said, I get this whole body sense of paying deep attention. It feels like a sense of, I can barely contain myself, excitement. I just started sobbing. I felt all the tension in my body completely release. I got a very specific feeling in my belly. My heart was pounding. I was sweating. More than one person described it as a profoundly visceral experience. That word appeared again and again in the stories told to me. God's voice somehow manages to draw us outside the bounds of our everyday human experience while at the same time being deeply grounded in our real lived reality. So maybe now, after hearing all this, we can better understand why the psalmist might describe God's voice in terms of what's essentially a natural disaster. It's the only thing within our shared frame of reference that even comes close to expressing the sort of impact that God's voice has on human beings. God's voice provokes glorious thunder, fiery flames, and convulsing trees within ourselves. The Lord's voice strips us bare. Sorry, friends. There it is. The Lord's voice strips us bare down to the roots of our very being, all in the space of a moment. I know that some of these descriptions may have triggered deep skepticism in, in some of you. I am having so much trouble here. Pause.
There we go. I know that some of these descriptions may have triggered deep skepticism or doubt within you. It was definitely challenging and humbling experience for me to hear them as I was born and bred Presbyterian, and that is not something that we talk about, those mystical experiences. <laughs> but I, I encourage you to hold that doubt in tension with the certainty and faith of those who shared their stories with me. People from all traditions, education levels, lay people and clergy, backgrounds and personalities. People who also wrestled with skepticism and doubt, even in the face of their own personal experience. And consider the possibility that God may communicate with humanity in ways beyond the familiar, ways that our minds and vocabulary struggle to make sense of. So given all this skepticism and information, let's hear Luke's account of Jesus' baptism once more, this time in the context of all that we've learned about God's voice. When everyone was being baptized, Jesus also was baptized. While he was praying, heaven was opened, and the Holy Spirit came down on him in bodily form like a dove. And there was a voice from heaven, you are my son, whom I dearly love, and you I find happiness. Maybe this passage isn't meant to be read literally. Could it be describing a far more mystical event than we usually picture? Maybe this was just the best way that Luke could figure out how to describe the experience in writing, this experience that's beyond human words. Maybe these words were actually perceived by more than the outward senses. Maybe the voice's message went beyond human hearing and instead saturated the very being of those who heard it. Maybe if Jesus had written down his own experience instead of hearing it secondhand from Luke, it would sound more like this description that I received. I never felt more seen in all my life. It doesn't make sense, but I would describe God's voice as a gold, glittery rumble in my middle. I wasn't alone while this was happening, and the others who were with me sensed that something special was happening as well. Although it sounds strange, maybe irrational, this account of God's voice somehow feels more authentic, more realistic, more true than the idea of a great, booming voice descending from the clouds. Don't you think? So what do we do with all this? I suspect that this is one of those sermons that will leave all of us, myself included, with more questions than answers. You'll probably walk out of here today with a vague sense of confusion and discomfort rather than an obvious lesson or personal conviction. That happens every once in a while. This may stem from a resistance to the more mysterious parts of faith, or it could be that you're disheartened because you've never had an experience quite like this before. Please don't hear this as a condemnation of you on either count. Instead, consider this an invitation, an invitation to hear familiar stories in a new way, an invitation to expand your perception of God, an invitation to embrace those experiences that can't be easily explained and don't fit neatly into your understanding of the world. An invitation to listen more closely, not just for God's voice, but to our fellow human beings so that we might learn about divine truths that go beyond our own personal experience. An invitation to open your heart, mind, and spirit to every way that God may be moving and speaking in the world. Because God is speaking. And whether or not you hear God's voice directly or through the words of a modern prophet or through group discernment or through a sense of divine presence, know this. Everything this voice says and commands us to do is for the purpose of sharing this one truth with the world 
You are my beloved child. In you, yes you, I find happiness. Thanks be to God. Amen. Friends, I invite you to stand as you're able as we sing hymn number 259. Um, I have a little disclaimer in the bulletin. It's a little bit of a strange melody. Um, I went back and forth about singing this with uh, together in worship, but I decided that it was the most fitting for the message today. Um, and it's a summary of Psalm 29, so it literally is what our reading was. Um, so we'll just give it our best shot. Um, and Sylvia will play the melody nice and loud for us so we can follow along. So please stand as we read, uh, sing our hymn. Mm -hmm. in recognition of COVID still being an unknown um, and, and a pervasive factor in our worship together, but we do still collect offering and uh, the work of the church goes on, both the mission and, um, and the logistics of worship and all those things we do together. And so if you would like to leave an offering for the church, the plates are located at the back of the sanctuary at either of the doors. You can also use the QR code in the bulletin or go to our website at boompeaceusa.org and there's a button to donate um, and you can set up recurring donations if you don't want to think about it. Um, and then, of course, you can always mail a check to our office building next door. Uh, the mailbox is locked, so it is secure and safe and we check it pretty much every day. So. Um, so instead of taking this time to pass the plates, we'll take this time to reflect on what it is that we have to offer God. Um, and, and as sort of a representative of that, Bill Buckendorf will be singing um, a song that he composed. The words are from the Bible, but the music is from him. And so he'll be sharing both the gifts of his musical talent as well as his, his creative musical talent. So let us reflect on um, all those things that God gives to us that we might offer back to God. He's got, yeah, these mics, these mics work.
to the response to scripture. Normally, it's just our affirmation of faith. Whoops. But today, um, we will be receiving new members. Um, session at their last meeting last Tuesday um, voted to receive these folks into membership, and we are joyfully welcoming them um, to our midst today. Now, they've been worshiping with us for quite some time, um, but now we are going to... Oh, come on. Make them make it official. Come on up here so that we can make sure the camera gets you. Um, this is for you. Okay. On behalf of the session, I present Tim Winsley, Chris Yao, and Tiffany Frisbee Yao, and Chris and Tiffany's daughter, Alice, who've been received into the membership of this congregation by reaffirmation of faith. In baptism you were claimed by God, marked as Christ's own forever, and joined to his body by the Holy Spirit. You come to us then not as strangers, but as friends in Christ and members of the household of God. We rejoice that you now desire to join with this congregation in the worship and mission of the church. Hear these words from scripture. There is one body and one spirit, just as you are called to the one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, and Father of all, who is above all, and through all, and in all. 
As members of the body of Christ, let us together reaffirm the faith into which we were baptized as we hear the familiar words of the Apostles' Creed. Please stand as you're able, and we will all affirm our faith together. And here's a copy in case anybody needs it. I know I can never remember it off the top of my head. Let us affirm our faith together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Tim, Chris, and Tiffany, and Alice, we have professed our faith as one body. Will you be faithful members of this congregation, share in its worship and mission through your prayers and gifts, your study and service, and so fulfill your calling to be a disciple of Jesus Christ? If so, respond, I will, with God's help. Let us pray. Holy God, thank you for calling us to be your people and joining us to Christ's body, the church. We praise you for leading these new siblings to this congregation. Empower us by your spirit that we might love one another as Christ loved us, honoring him in all that we say and do, giving our lives in service to others through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. Friends, welcome to this ministry that we share in Jesus Christ. We give thanks for your presence here and your willingness to join us in membership. Let us welcome our new siblings in Christ with applause. <laughs> Following worship, I invite you to extend your welcome and congratulations personally um, to our new members. Also, on a related note of a, an announcement that I forgot to mention, next week we'll be installing and ordaining our new um, officers, our deacons and elders for 2022. So we'll have another liturgy tomorrow. Um, and we do have a couple of ordinations, which is always a really special uh, liturgy for us to take part in. So friends, with Thanksgiving for our community together and acknowledge and, and, and knowledge that part of our being community together includes praying for one another. Let us lift up our prayers before God and each other. Um, I invite you to share your prayers with me if I know I have some on my phone, so let's see. First of all, um, prayers for Margot Mapp, who was uh, sideswiped by their labradoodle, I think, a really big dog, and she broke or fractured her femur. Shattered is the word that they used. Shattered her femur. Um, so she was in the hospital for surgery, and um, I'm not sure if she's home yet. I know they were hoping that she'd be home soon. Okay. Good, good. Thank you for that. She's been transferred to a, a rehab place so that they can get her moving again and all that. So she's not home yet, um, but that was a, a very unexpected and unwelcome twist, I'm sure. So prayers for Margo in her recovery, prayers for Rick as he um, has been so far wonderful about keeping us in the loop and letting us know what's going on and as he plays a supportive role for her. Also, um, let's see, Thanksgiving to the generous, for the generous donations of the items going to the various agencies. Um, Karen is giving thanks as our chair of mission. She gives thanks for um, all of your generosity and, and uh, con contributions for, to, that will be going to all sorts of different organizations, um, helping children and women and families and men and every, every sorts of people. Um, our newest agency is CASA, the third district of the 
guardian, oh, I don't need, that's Latin. Um, <laughs> what, what, it, what, it, what do they? Foster care, yes, okay, wonderful. So yes, that's CASA, where it's supporting foster care, um, children in foster care. If you remember, one of the things that we had on our list was backpacks or luggage, because kids in foster care often don't have any way to bring their belongings from place to place. And um, so you all responded wonderfully to that, and, and that is now part of our mission. Excellent, Thank, thanksgiving for that. Um, and also remember the homeless in, as the weather continues to be cold, even if the snow is, is disappearing, the cold weather still is a um, dangerous thing for those without shelter. Other prayers. Jan is asking for help um, providing for the MAC. So she's lifting up prayers that in your generosity, you will respond to this call uh, to help make meals for uh, Rick and Margot as they need it. She says they don't have a schedule yet, but um, they'll be putting one together once she knows who is able and interested in helping. Other prayers, yes, Christy. Thanksgiving to all those uh, who stepped up immediately to cover um, the, mass, the max many responsibilities that they have taken on in the last couple years. Um, Thanksgiving for, for those who have responded and um, are, are invested in making sure that our church life goes on and that there's, that's one less thing that the max have to worry about. Um, and also Thanksgiving to our deacons um, for, for jumping in and taking the lead on that and, and being um, the front line of making sure that all their needs get taken care of, um, especially since they just started a new year and are still, they just hit the ground running. So Thanksgiving um, to all of our deacons um, and to those who, who are not officially leadership of the church, but still take leadership roles. Other prayers. All right, then let us continue in prayer together. Gracious God, living in community can be difficult. We know that families fight, families don't get along, but we also know that families love one another. And so we give you thanks, God, that even as you say, you are my beloved child, in you I find happiness, we share that message with one another through our words and our actions and our generosity. Help us to hear the needs of the world both those in our small corner of it and the larger ones, and help us to respond prayerfully and faithfully. For those of us who are in need, help us to reach out and ask for help so that we can be surrounded in the love that your family has for one another. God, we lift up all those who are suffering, who are in pain, who are lost and who desperately need to be reminded that they are beloved. We lift up all these people to you, God, knowing that your hand can heal and that our love can be a vehicle for your healing. God, we lift up all those prayers spoken here today aloud, those that we have kept silent and private on our hearts, and those that we don't even yet have the words to express. But we know that your spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. All this we pray in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, let us stand with our final hymn, number 489, Wonder of Wonders Here Revealed, where we'll only be singing verses 1, 2, and 4. Thank you. 